In this video, which is the seventh in that series of lessons for the beginner in how to play the alt harp using the all keys alt harp style, I wish to introduce a new configuration of the chord bar buttons. As regards the damping pattern on the felt on the chord bars, they are no different from the patterns that were shown in videos two and three. It's just that I have rearranged the ordering of the chord bars for this new chord bar configuration. How has the configuration changed? So from the earlier videos, I mentioned how there were different sets and different types of chord bar buttons, that we had the four different positive augmented third buttons, and that they were arranged in this row here. As well as that, we had the three diminished third buttons in the same row, and then we had the 12 major minor and seventh buttons arranged along these two other rows here, with the dampener button in this position here. Well, all that has changed. So in this new configuration, I'll refer to this row here as the top row, and in each row, there are seven columns. So these are the columns here. So starting with the top row and the top column, we have the button for C sharp major, and also its relative minor, which is the B flat minor. So as regards this block of 12 buttons here, they are the 12 major minor and seventh buttons, starting with the C sharp major here. And after that, we have the dominant of C sharp major, which is F sharp major, and then we progress in fifths along the columns and the rows until we get to this button here, which is at the bottom row, and in column four, which is the A flat major button. And then the next button after that, we go back to its dominant, which is the C sharp major again at this top position here. So we press those buttons in order to play those major chords. If we wish to play the relative minor, then we use the same button as well. So for example, if I wish to play the chord of B flat minor, the relative minor third, so I press the same button as the C sharp major. So as regards these 12 buttons here, we play them using only the thumb. And after that, we have this group of four buttons here, which are the positive augmented third buttons. And as regards how they're numbered, I've taken the same numbering system as from the previous configuration. So this button here is number one, and then we go anti-clockwise. This button here is two, this one is three, and this one is four. So in order to produce a major chord, I need to press two of these buttons here, which are two of these augmented major third positives, plus one of these buttons here from the 12, and similarly, if I wish to play a minor chord, I need to press two of these buttons from the four here of the augmented thirds and play one of the twelve. And if I wish to play a major seventh or a major sixth or a minor seventh, then I just need to press one of these buttons here and one of these twelve up here in this block. So before I demonstrate those chords, I just need to mention this slot here. So if you have been watching the earlier videos, then you will be aware that we used 19 different chord bars in order to produce the 84 different harmonies. And then we have the extra dampener chord that is used to dampen all the strings at once. And then we have the one blank slot there. And whereas in the previous configuration, the blank slot didn't serve any particular purpose, in this new configuration, the blank slot does have a very important purpose and it serves as the ring finger holder. So when we play the auto harp using this configuration of chord buttons, which I'm calling the 1243RD configuration, then this position here and this slot here is very important as a ring finger holder in order to keep the hand in position. So I'll just demonstrate that right now by inserting my ring finger in that hole. And that is how we play the chord buttons using this chord button configuration the ring finger needs to be in that hole, in this position here. So that means that in order to play any of these 12 buttons, which are the major minor seventh buttons, that forces us to play those buttons using the correct finger, which is the thumb. And as regards these four here, then we are forced to play these four using the correct fingering for them, which are the index and the middle fingers. And as regards these four positive augmented third buttons here, I use the word positive because as regards those notes, which form the augmented third. On the felt pattern, they are cut out as positives so that they are dampened as opposed to sounding. As regards these four buttons here, in order to be able to play them quickly and effectively, we have to play them a certain way, which is that whenever we play these two buttons here, which are buttons one and four in column six, then we need to play them using just the one finger, the middle finger. Similarly, if we are playing the two buttons here, which are both in the fifth column, then we need to play them using just the one finger, the index finger. Whereas if we're playing these two buttons here, which are in different columns but in the same row, then we play them using the index and the middle fingers. 
Similarly, with these two buttons here, which are in different columns, but they are both in the same row, then we play them using the index and the middle fingers like that. So for example, if we wish to play the chord of C-sharp major, then we need to play these two buttons from the four positives up there. And so, because they are in the same row but different columns, we play them using the index and the middle fingers, and we play the C-sharp button here using the thumb, like that. So that's the chord of C-sharp major, and to dampen that, I dampen that using my little finger, like that. So I'll just do that again. Like that. And if I wish to play the relative minor of C-sharp major, which is the B-flat minor, then in order to play the relative minor, I play the same button here from the 12, using the thumb. But for the 4 augmented third here, I just need to rotate those two buttons round anti-clockwise, like that. So the two buttons for the relative minor are now in the same column, but different rows. So for that, because they are in the fifth column, I play them using the one finger, the index finger. So this is the relative minor of C sharp major, which is B flat minor. So in the previous lessons, I showed how to play the chords of C major, F major, G major 7th and G major. So how do we play those same chords using this new configuration? It's much easier than playing them using the old configuration. So as regards C major, we play the, the C major chord button with the thumb at position middle 3, which is this one here. And from the four augmented third buttons, we play buttons 1 and 4, which are these two buttons here. And because they are in the sixth column and in different rows, and then play them with the middle finger like that. So it's like that. So this is C major. As regards F major, because F is the subdominant of C, then we go down one, which is this button here, which is bottom row, column three. And then in order to play the subdominant chord, we just swing those two buttons there, one and four, 90 degrees clockwise, whereas before for C major we had these two buttons here. We swing them round so that we play these two buttons here for the subdominance, the F major. So these are buttons 1 and 2, and because they are in the same row and different columns, we play them using the index and the middle fingers, like this. I'll just demonstrate the G major chord first, and then I'll show the G7th. So as regards the G major chord, then because it's the dominant as opposed to the subdominant, instead of swinging the two buttons round clockwise, we just swing them round the opposite way anti-clockwise. So with the C major, we have these two buttons here. So for the dominant, we swing them round 90 degrees anti-clockwise. So it's these two buttons here. Again, because they are in different columns, but in the same row, we play them using the index and the middle fingers. And as regards the G major, because it's the dominant of C major, then we go up one button to the next position up, and it's that button there, which is top row, column three. So this is G major. So now that we have the major chord for G major, how do we play the major seventh of the major chord? Well, the same rule applies to all the major keys, which is that from the two buttons of the major chord in the augmented third buttons, if we wish to play the major seventh chord of the major chord, then we just play the one button, the one that is the most forward going anti-clockwise. So it's this one here, and we press the major chord button, so it's just these two buttons. This is the major seventh chord of G major. So at this stage, one might ask the question, so if the most forward button going anti-clockwise produces the seventh chord, what about the other button there of the two? The one that is most forward going clockwise, this button there? Well, the same applies to every major chord, which is that the button of the two for the major chord that is most forward going clockwise plays the major sixth of the major chord. So these two buttons here play the major sixth of G major, like this. So as I mentioned just now, that same rule applies to all the major keys of the 12. So supposing we go back to C major, for C major we had these two buttons here in the same column as the augmented third buttons 
for the C major. So suppose it's, so suppose we play the one that is most forward, going anti-clockwise. That should produce C major seventh. which it does. And as regards the other button, which is the one most forward, going clockwise, that should produce the C major 6th. So we just have a listen. And it does as well. So just to recap, we have these top 12 buttons here, which are the buttons for the major chords, the major 7th, the major 6th, and the relative minor 3rd. And then we have these four buttons here, which are the buttons that we need to press in conjunction with the major minor and seventh buttons in order to produce those harmonies. And then we have the slot here, which is the finger holder for the ring finger that keeps the hand in position. And then we have the dampener button there, which is played by the little finger. So what are these three last buttons here? So these three last buttons play the diminished thirds. So this button here, which is played using the last finger plays the diminished thirds for C minor, A minor, E flat minor and F sharp minor like this. This button here plays the diminished third for D minor, F minor, A flat minor and B minor like this. And that button is played by the middle finger. And as regards this last button here, that plays the diminished minor third chords for E minor, G minor, B flat minor and C sharp minor. And that can be played by either the middle finger or the index finger, like this. So one might ask the question, with this new configuration, how much easier is it to play the chords using this new configuration? Well, what I'll do is that I'll demonstrate how much easier it is by playing the same piece of music that I played in the previous lesson. But as I do so, if one would observe the thumb, the index and the middle fingers on the buttons, and how little movement is required in those fingers, then one can really appreciate how much better it is compared to the previous configuration. So I'll just play that music now. As you might have observed, very little movement was required to make those changes from tonic to subdominant to dominant back to tonic. So what I'll do for the rest of this video is that I'll just provide a, a description of the schematic for the chord bars for this new configuration of the chord buttons. So if you haven't already converted the auto harp to this new chord bar configuration, then what I would suggest that you do is to watch the videos number two and three, first of all, which provide a full walkthrough in how to do the conversion. And once you've done that, instead of following the schematic in those videos for the chord bar arrangement, that you follow the chord bar configuration that I'm about to give in this video. So as regards this chord button configuration, I've called it the 1243RD configuration. The reason for that is because they're named after the five different types of chord buttons. First of all, we have the 12 different major minor and seventh chord buttons arranged in the top block there of 12 and then we have the four sets of and then we have the set of four positive augmented third buttons there which are highlighted in red and then we have the three diminished third buttons there which are highlighted in blue at the very bottom and then we have the slot for the ring finger holder which is very important in order to get the hand in the correct position and to be able to press the buttons with the correct fingering. And then lastly, the D stands for the dampener chord, which, as I mentioned in earlier lessons, enables us to create that clarity of delineation of harmony and melody. So if you haven't done the conversion already, then what you need are the 19 blank chord bars on which you would need to cut the dampening pattern on the felt, then you would need, as well as that, a pen for marking out the correct strings on the chord bar, 
and a craft knife for cutting out the actual felt, the negatives and the positives, and then you'd need the extra additional blank cord bar for the dampener bar. So we'll just have a quick run through now of the actual ordering of the cord bars in this new 1243RD cord button configuration. So starting at the very top there, cord bar position 1, we have the cord bar for the major chord for C sharp major and its relative minor, B flat minor, and its seventh chord, C sharp major seventh. And this diagram shows the actual that needs to be cut out on the felt. So if you're doing the conversion as we speak, then what you may wish to do is to pause this video and just to make a note of what the pattern is. So moving on to position two, we have the chord bar for F sharp, F sharp seventh, and E flat minor. And then position three, we have the chord bar for B major, B major seventh, and A flat minor. And then we have chord bar four, which is the chord bar for E major, E major seventh, and C sharp minor. And then chord bar 5, it's the chord bar for A major, A major 7th, and F minor, and F sharp minor. Chord bar 6 is the chord bar for D major, D major 7th, and B minor. Chord bar 7th is the chord bar for G major, G major 7th, and E minor. Chord bar 8, it's the chord bar for C major, C major 7th, and A minor. Chord bar 9 is a chord bar for F major, F major 7th and D minor. Chord bar 10 is the chord bar for B flat major, B flat major 7th and G minor. Chord bar 11 is the chord bar for E flat major, E flat major 7th and C minor. Chord bar 12 is the chord bar for A flat major, A flat major 7th and F minor. So those were the set of 12 major, minor and 7th chord bars. And then after them, at position number 13, we have the blank slot for the ring finger holder. And then after that, at chord bar position 14, we have the positive chord bar for the augmented third, with the positives dampening the notes of C, E, and G sharp. And that is augmented third button number 3. And after that, at chord bar position 15, we have the augmented third positive dampener for D flat, G, B, D flat, G, and B, and that is numbered, positive button, augmented third button, number two. And then after that, at position number 16, we have the dampener bar, which doesn't have any notches in it because it dampens out all the strings at once. And then after that, at position number 17, we have the augmented third positive that dampens out the notes of C sharp, F, and A. And then after that, we have at chord bar position number 18, the augmented third positive that dampens out the notes of D, F sharp, and A sharp. And that is number one. And lastly, at the very last column there, we have the three diminished third negatives. So at position 19, we have the diminished third negatives that sounds the notes of A, C, D sharp, and F sharp, which is the diminished third chord of C minor, E flat minor, F sharp minor, and A minor. And then after that, at position number 20, we have the diminished third chord for D minor, F minor, A flat minor, and B. And then lastly, at the very last chord bar position, number 21, we have the diminished third chord for E minor, G minor, B flat minor, and C sharp minor. So in this very last slide, at the very top section there, which says 1243RD, chord buttons arrangement, that just gives a very basic map of where the buttons are. And then underneath that, where it says 1243RD, chord buttons, eight fingering rules. That just gives a summary of the eight rules of fingering for this chord button configuration that I mentioned earlier on. As regards the last section there, the 84 harmonies are played as follows. That actually lists, that lists in tabular format, the chord buttons that need to be pressed in order to play those 84 harmonies. So once again, it may be useful just to do a pause on this video and just to make a note of what those buttons are, or just to do a screen print so that one has a permanent reference for these buttons for the 84 harmonies. So that is all for this lesson. I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you do have any comments or suggestions, then do leave them down below. Otherwise, in the meantime, until next time, have a nice day.